In this instruction video, we will discuss three experimental designs that are very common. The simplest design is the randomized two-group design. In this design, participants are randomly assigned to one of the two conditions, usually a treatment or experimental group, where the cause is present, and a control group, where the cause is absent. The independent variable could also differ between the conditions in amount or kind. For example, if we're investigating the effect of male versus female math teachers on the math performance of boys. The dependent variable is measured after exposure to the independent variable to assess the difference between the groups. With this design, we can rule out alternative explanations or threats to internal validity. We know that differences are not a result of maturation, because the two groups should have matured at the same rate if they were tested at the same time. Also, by looking carefully at the experimental procedures, we might be able to rule out history and instrumentation as an explanation. In addition, we know that any differences between the two groups after the treatment are not a result of a selection threat, because participants were randomly assigned rather than self-selected or systematically assigned to the groups. We can visualize this design with the following schematic representation, where R denotes that the participants have been randomly assigned to one of the two conditions. X is a specific level of the independent variable, and O is an observation or measurement of the dependent variable. The second design is the two-group pretest-posttest design, which adds a pretest of the dependent variable before exposure to the independent variable. With a pretest, you can check whether, for example, both groups were equally proficient at math before being exposed to one of the conditions. A pretest also allows the researcher to compare the size of the increase or decrease in scores in the experimental and control condition. For example, we can assess how much the boys' math performance increased due to natural improvement and what the additional effect of teacher sex was. Unfortunately, a pretest can sometimes sensitize participants. The pretest may result in a practice effect, leading to higher scores on the post test, or it may alert participants to the purpose of the study. We can visualize the two group pretest post test design with the following schematic representation, where again R denotes that the participants have been randomly assigned to one of the two conditions. O1 and O3 are the pretests, X is a specific level of the independent variable, and O2 and O4 represent the post tests. The third design is the Solomon four group design. This design combines the first two designs. In total, there are four groups. The experimental and control condition are run twice, once with a pretest and once without. With this design, a researcher can test whether the post test differences were caused by the treatment, the pretest, or a combination of treatments and pretest. We can visualize this design with the following schematic representation. So far, we have discussed three randomized experimental designs. But another common design is the between participants factorial design. In this design, two or more independent variables, also known as factors, that's why it's called factorial design, are presented in a combination. These four designs can be categorized as between participants designs, because the independent variable varies between participants. Another very common randomized experimental design is the repeated measures design. In this design, the independent variable varies within participants rather than between participants. 
We will discuss the vectorial design and repeated measures design in additional videos.